so now uh, moving on we are going to go to pay policies so we'll get started with uh, pay codes so this is the first thing i have to do i have to go to definition definition is where i'm going to specify what type of pay code i have um so uh, suppose just consider that i am i am an employee i'm working somewhere mm, i'm working in a hospital so i'm going to work every day my job is just to work for 9 hours but uh, this is some flu season so i am i'm working extra so i'm working at least 2 hours extra so it is it okay to just uh, tell my company that i have worked only uh, this many hours like uh, you know in total i have worked this many hours or uh, will it look nice if i tell the company that uh, hey my normal hours are this my overtime hours are this so the second one seems good right so it's it's better to track how much you have worked in different uh, different types or what to say your different categories so normally your shift is only for 8 hours but sometimes you are working extra sometimes you are working less so in order to track all these you need something called as pay codes pay codes again are like uh, you know your route like your labor levels they are also used in uh, different uh, areas within the system so your pay codes um, this is your pay code definition under pay policies i am under pay codes so this is a bottom to top approach we have to fill up all our way in the bottom to go to top that's your pay rules um so pay codes is a separate entity work rule building blocks is a separate entity and your pay rule is a separate entity so uh, we'll get started with pay code so i've clicked on new this is my uh, new page so you see here i have three different types of pay codes one is standard one is duration the other one is cascading so i'll explain duration when we go to uh, an option called as auto resolved exceptions uh, because i think this i mean we have been following this approach like uh, as and when we reach a building block it's better to uh, identify the necessary pay code for that so it's easier for you to map or relate to it so duration and pay code we'll just uh, look at it later but for now we'll look at standard standard is the most common pay code that you will be using so in standard only for standard you will be asked a uh, unit so for rest all your uh, units are blocked so you cannot add any units so when you have a standard pay code it will ask you in what uh, type your uh, 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 amount should be shown so it should be hours money or days so remember i showed you an employee uh, where she had uh, some hours right so let me just say 9 am to 5 pm so you see this person has a regular this is this is showing as regular because this person has a payroll assigned but i'm going to remove it because uh, this is somebody else's payroll this is not my payroll i have to create a new payroll for this person so this person has a in and out this person is coming at 9 am going at 5 pm this is unscheduled because they don't have a schedule but it's it's showing me 8 hours in my uh, regular pay code so this is the type for it this is the unit so this is the place you want to uh, concentrate on on your uh, units so you can either have hours money or days mostly 99% we only create hour related pay codes money for bonus related pay code uh, so let me create a i'm going to create a regular pay code so all this option is grayed out this is not available to me this is only available for your duration pay codes so once i have identified my hours money and days i have to go to my multiplier and addition uh, so multiplier and addition is the place where we are going to tell how this pay code is going to operate so when it is a normal pay code you can just uh, leave it at 1 and 0 but if it is an overtime pay code your company might say that they want to pay them one pay their employees 1.5 times their base wage so in those cases we'll be using multi application and addition uh, just a minute sorry just a minute so uh, let's discuss how multiplier is um, added uh, these are your usernames when you get your rdp these are the usernames for your uh, chronos and password is same for all of you 
Skronos one two three K small all small actually. Okay, so let's uh, let's start with multiplier. So we're looking how this part works. So there's a formula for this. It's it's actually uh, quite logical. So suppose my uh, So my sub, my employee is uh, qualifying for two hours of overtime. Base wage is twenty dollars, and my uh, company is saying that they can multi have a multiplier of one point five zero added in the pay code. So in this case, what you have to do is this is the formula for it: base wage into your uh, multiplier into the total number of hours that you have worked. So in this case, it's going to be 20 into 1.5, the whole thing uh, multiplied by uh, two, right? So that's going to be $60 for me. So if you add, my, instead of one, if you add 1.50, then this is, going to, this is going to be the scenario. Suppose, uh, if they say that they want to give a shift differential, so alternate name for that is your addition component in your pay codes. This is your add add value. So if I say that uh, this is the uh, add value, then uh, uh, suppose your uh, employee Okay, so the addition field can be used when your employee should be paid at a flat rate for uh, every hour they work. So if the multiplier is zero and the addition field contains a value, then the pay code wage is a flat hourly rate. So for example, um, when you work a hazardous job, the hazard pays $25 per hour. So uh, even though the employee's base wage is 20, he's going to get paid of $25. So the formula is very simple. It's add value into your uh, number of hours worked that is your wages so that is 25 dollars into eight is equal to 200 dollars so any any questions we'll just try to demonstrate this so this person already has this pay code right so let us go to this pay code and make a change well, we just uh, make a change to the multiplier first. Okay, so right now the multiplier in addition is uh, simple. Uh, so let us make this as 1.50 and save this. I'll go to time cards. So let me just uh, make this into two hours. So we'll just uh, try to demonstrate this for. Uh... Um, sorry. Just... Okay, uh, this person doesn't have a base wage yet. So let us go to, uh, so there's this go to, right? I can also use this to go to people editor. Uh, timekeeper is the place where I have to add a base wage. So let me add uh, $20 for this person right now. So going back to time cards, let us just uh, make a small edit. Let us say it's 10 a.m. 
so normally the base wage is only 20 right so in this case it has to show me a wage Sometimes I have to sign out and sign back in to force the system to uh, lay on the uh, time cards. Uh, since this is a dev system, we don't have the uh, uh, notification server. So there's not something that's constantly running, unlike your production server where uh, you can keep testing. Like it's, it's always running. There's a background processor that runs behind. So it keeps running. Okay, I'll demonstrate this again. I need to remove the payroll. I'll demonstrate this again. So this uh, wage should reflect here. I will check this uh, shortly. Um, did you understand the formula, like how it works? Uh, so this person already has a payroll, so I'm not sure what the rule is. Like it seems to be a different rule. So we are going to build a payroll from scratch. So when I do it, I'll be able to demonstrate it. So this pay this person's payroll is uh, is an existing one that's been created by one of our students. So by default, it just adds a payroll. Like when I create a new employee, by default, it adds the uh, first payroll that's in the system. So I, I'm going to remove it and uh, add a new one, but I'll be doing it tomorrow in tomorrow's class when we start working with uh, building blocks, work rule building blocks. Okay, uh, so there's one more uh, component to this. So you can also add a multiplier. Add so to add a... So uh, consider your employee qualifying for a shift differential pay of three hours. The base wage is uh, Uh, let's leave it at uh, one for simple calculation. We'll have an addition component of 1.5. Your multiplier could also be uh, 1.5. That is also possible. So the formula for this is your base wage into multiplier plus your addition component. This whole thing by your hash work. So based on this uh, formula, it's going to be $20 into 1.0. That's your multiplier. I'll close this. Uh, to this, you're going to add your uh, addition, two point, your addition value. This whole thing is getting multiplied by the number of hours that you have worked. So that is uh, almost around uh, $68, $69, 68 point, uh, Seven five two five. So this is how you can. Um, I'll I'll show you the assignment document. It has uh, more information in it. So uh, that's it with your multiplication and addition. So there are some uh, suite wide options that determine whether the pay code can be viewed in different areas of the product. So the first one is visible in main area of time card and uh, uh, schedule. So this is your. Uh, time card option. So let me go back 
So this is the time card page. So if you want your uh, pay code to be viewable here and here, then you have to select this. This has to be selected. Uh, this is by default, it comes like this. So I'll just explain where these uh, options are, where you can look at this. So uh, reports option is you can view it in the report section. And uh, there is also a uh, time and attendance uh, option. So this is in the uh, daily and the cumulative totals on the time card. And your reports uh, option is, uh, there is a report available within uh, Kronos. So if I go to manage my departments, there is this reports. So there are a number of uh, inbuilt reports within Kronos. So you can, when you have a payroll created, you can test it and uh, you can um, select your employees' hours, how much they have worked, etc. So there are many reports in this. So in your free time, you can uh, browse this and see the reports in the system. So I can just run. So this is used to find out what are the accrual codes within the system. Uh, I think there's also one for pay codes. So you can also find out what are the pay codes in the system. I just have to run this so it will run. So these are the pay codes in the system. So these are some Kronos built reports. Uh, any questions so far on creating pay codes? Uh, but these options are related to overtime. So when we work with work rule building blocks, I'll come back here and then I'll show it to you again. But let me uh, show you the... Uh, uh, it. Uh, so this needs a lot of practice. So one, uh, get your remote desktops, call support and get your remote desktops and keep uh, practicing. Practice is the only way to get through this. Uh, it's not easy to remember all the rules and all the uh, combinations. So even now I cannot, if you ask me suddenly something, I cannot because I just took this class yesterday. I'm able to uh, uh, speak about this, but uh, you know, all this needs a lot of practice. So only when you practice, you'll be able to um, get a very strong hold on this. So the first part is uh, labor levels. These are the labor level entries within the system. This is just to give you an idea of what the entries are. This is already added, so you don't have to add it again. So you can directly start working from pay policies. So you have to start adding the pay codes. I've given you how you can uh, uh, navigate and uh, how you have to add it. So this is the uh, pay code table. These are the multiplier and addition options. But before you create a pay code, you have to create all these pay codes, but these are already there in the system. Like the same names is already available. So generally we follow a rule that uh, we add first uh, initial letters or first name uh, of yours, give a space and then add this pay code. So, let so you see, I've added CF, CF and given a space and I've added, right? So this means that all my pay codes are at one place. So if I just add at the end, so if I add CF after regular, it means that regular will be sorted first and uh, CF will not even be uh, shown. So I'll show you one more example of a student who did. So this is another student. Uh, he used his uh, initials like CVRM space the pay codes. So you can also create like this. So Vinisha can do VIN space uh, their name. Pranay, I think PR will already be there so you can try pra or uh, pranay would be too big so just use pra and go on you can just use your uh, first four inches like you can just use uh, jua and space your uh, uh, pay code name so you can just you have to create pay codes like this uh, the table will tell you what your multiplier and addition component has to be. Yeah, you have to go every time you have to go to new. So every time you don't have to do save and return. So once you create, you can just once you're done with uh, first pay code, you can just click on save and new. So it will okay. save your existing and give you a new page. So you can just uh, go on. Uh, okay. Mostly you don't have to touch anything in this. You just have to add a name and uh, make sure you add the correct multiplier and addition. This is your first assignment. Yeah. So we are going to work with it. Okay, right now, just work on definition. Uh, once we work with building blocks, we will have to come to one of these. So I'll come back again and I'll let you know how it works. So for now, just go to pay codes definition and create your pay codes. But uh, please don't forget to add your initials. Otherwise, it's very difficult to track your work.
uh, it's okay. very easy for me if you add your name it's very easy for me to find out your work and to make any corrections if you have any questions it's easier for me to verify okay okay sure okay yep okay, okay then 